Hello, I am Seamus Dunhu of EVE University, and this is Episode 5 of How to Survive EVE Online. In this episode, we are going to go through the exploration chain. Uh, first of all, before I begin, uh, let me do another check of what skill books I can or cannot inject. So I'm just, just going to right-click each one and select Inject Skills. And if I run into any problems, it will throw an error message at me. Electronic Upgrades Level 3 which I am currently training. Contracting is prohibited on trial accounts. And this needs trade level 2. Alright. So nothing further I can do to clean up the skill books that I have in my hangar. Okie dokie. So, let's get started on the exploration chain. Uh, go to the EVE menu. Help. And let me drag this back onto my Neocon. Uh, let me open the help window, the support tab, and show career agents. Second button from the bottom. Wait for the window to open. Here we go. Scroll down, look for exploration. For the Center for Advanced Studies, that's Olari Lasentin. And click start conversation. Again, if you're in one of the other Galente starting corporations like Federal Navy Academy or University of Kai, or you're a different race entirely, so maybe you're an Amarian in Hedian University or a Minmitar in the Pater Tech School, the name of the agent will be different. Now, Olari Lacentin uh, wants us to do some exercises with onboard scanning and look for a cosmic anomaly. So we're going to go ahead and click Accept. And let me close this window. This is not a combat mission. No combat is involved in this chain at all. Uh, I'm going to switch to my Atron, the one which has no modules on it, since I don't want to go messing around with my Tristan's fittings. Uh, we were... Hold on. Is Astrometrics a reward, or... Okay, we're going to get the Astrometrics skillbook when we finish the mission. Let's undock. And I am going to click Next, and... All right. Once you're in space, first of all, I don't want to go too far, so I'm going to left-click the station, and I am going to right-click the station and orbit at current, no distance available. Really, I'm going to orbit it at zero. So I'm just going to orbit around its docking perimeter. I don't want to go very far. Let me close my cargo scanner. So in space, on your heads-up display, to the left of the capacitor donut, there are some buttons. You want to click the one underneath your cargo hold button. So this is your cargo hold button. The one underneath is your onboard scanner, or your various scanning systems. And let's move this off to the side a bit. And I am going to make this window go away. So, let's open up the map. Now, besides the star map, you can also get the solar system map. So go to the world map control panel, and at the top center, click solar system map. And this is a map of the solar system we're flying in right, uh, flying around right now. Right. Uh, that is one of the bookmarks that I made in the previous episode. Of course, the Kernite that it marks is no longer there because that was part of a mission. All right, so this is the solar system. That's the sun in the center and the orbits of the planets. And you are here. Well, I am here at any rate. To find cosmic anomalies, every ship has an onboard scanner. So you open up this scan window, you go to the System Scanner tab, and you click Analyze. And your ship will take 10 seconds to look for any and all cosmic anomalies that are within 64 astronomical units of your ship. Distances between the planets are measured in astronomical units. Uh, if I click on this button down here, Tactical, I get a representation of distances. So these concentric circles uh, show, give me a sense of scale. 
So this circle around here is a lateral circle around my ship. Not up or down, but lateral. And it's 25 astronomical units out. Your onboard scanner has a range of 64 astronomical units. Plenty for this solar system, but you will encounter solar systems that are much, much bigger than 64 astros. So we found three sites. All of them are anomaly training sites. If you see anything else, like a Serpentis something or other, or an Angel something or other, or a Blood Raider something, don't warp there. That's a real honest-to-goodness exploration site, and your rookie ship is going to get eaten alive. So, right-click an anomaly training site and warp to within zero meters. Warp drive active. And, if I stay on the map and zoom in a little bit, And everything just dropped off overview, and I am moving. You can see me moving in warp on the solar system map. Let me close the solar system map by hitting F10. And, oh, the tactical also draws concentric cir... Ah, here we go. You have done well. You are now inside a cosmic anomaly. Normally there would be hostile ships present, but our people have already cleared the area. All you need to do now is recover the proof of discovery document we left there. You can find one of them in the nearby training containers. You only need a single document. It will serve as physical proof that you have passed the stage of the tutorial, so make sure to recover at least one. So left-click the training container anomalies and click open container, and your ship will automatically approach. Uh, the tactical button that I was telling you about a moment ago can also draw concentric circles around your ship in, on your local grid. So this outermost circle is 200 kilometers away from your ship. And there are closer distance measurements than that. Alright, there's our proof of discovery. Anomalies. If the container is empty because somebody else just took one, wait a few seconds. I think another one should appear. If not, you can just warp to a different anomaly training site. But I'm going to loot all. So now the proof of discovery is in my cargo hold. Is another one of these going to appear? I'm not sure. Yes. So if there isn't one there, another one will appear within several seconds or so. Let's left click the station and click dock. Warp drive active. Docking permission requested. Docking request accepted. All right. So we are in station. Right click the agent that says accepted and start conversation. And we are going to complete the mission. And we've been given a an astrometric skill book as a reward. Uh, you're going to need this for the next mission. Right click on it, train now to level one. Yes, bump off whatever else you have ahead of it in the queue. So you want to train astrometrics level one as quickly as possible. Uh, that's going to take me about mm, 25 minutes. All right, so let's request the next mission. So this next mission is an introduction to cosmic signatures. Uh, you'll be granted yet another Navitas when you accept the mission. We're not going to need it. Uh, Basically, this is just a tour of the different types of cosmic signatures. Let me click accept and um, close and undock. All right, once you are in space, right click empty space and Go to Agent Missions and Introduction to Cosmic Signatures, Encounter Dead Space, Warp to Location. Some very basic concepts I may have forgotten to talk about with regards to exploration. There are hidden sites 
that can be found all over New Eden, both in known space as well as in other kinds of solar systems called wormhole space. These sites are hidden, you can't warp to them immediately. The cosmic anomalies are the easiest to find. You can just run your ship's onboard scanner, find all cosmic anomalies that are within 64 astronomical units of your ship, and warp to one of them. Cosmic signatures are a bit more difficult to find. You won't find them using an onboard scanner. You need to use probes for that. And we'll go over probes later on in this episode. Uh, you can read through the text uh, at your... You can read through the text at your leisure. I'm not going to waste your time in this video. So I'm going to left-click and activate the acceleration gate. Now, there are a few different types of cosmic signatures, and this tour is going to show you four of them. So I'm going to talk real quick about what it is that you can find. But generally, with any of the exploration sites, there's usually something there that you can profit off of, that you can loot, or that you can shoot. And the first type... Oh, oh this is just a supply area. So this first pocket... Uh, just left-click the Exploration Supplies, and click Open Cargo. Your ship will approach the cargo rig. And you want to click Loot All. You're going to make use of this launcher and these probes in the next mission. And you can read through the text at your leisure. Again, I won't waste your time. Uh, so let's close this, and let's click the acceleration gate and activate the gate. Warp drive active. All right. The first type of cosmic signature that the game will uh, throw text at you about is our gravimetric signatures. Uh, generally, these represent uh, these are asteroid clusters, and you can mine them. The advantage of the advantage of mining in a gravimetric site, uh, as opposed to just one of the celestial asteroid belts, usually you find better types of ores for the security status of the system. So you can find low security ores in high security grav sites. You can find null security ores in low security grav sites. Uh, so mining in gravimetric sites can be more profitable than just mining in the celestial asteroid belts that you can find just by right-clicking empty space and going to, say, Clelanon 7 Asteroid Belt 2 or Clelanon 1 Asteroid Belt 1, for example. Uh, the other advantage is that if anybody is going to try and bother you while mining, they do have to go to a little bit extra effort to find you, rather than just warp to the celestial asteroid belt. So they do have to scan down the same belt that you did. Let's activate the gate. Warp drive active. All right, the second type of site the game's going to talk about are magnetometric. Now, in magnetometric sites, uh, there are containers that you can loot, uh, and the contents you can sell them for profit or use them for various purposes in EVE Online. There are usually also enemies that you also have to fight to get to those containers. Uh, you will need to bring with you a, a real salvager module and a real analyzer module not the civilian varieties. Let's activate the gate. Warp drive active. The next type of site is a radar site. Basically, this is some sort of hidden compound uh, where it also has containers that you can break into and loot. You need code breakers for that purpose. Uh, 
So you want to bring codebreaker modules, a codebreaker module with you to access those kinds of containers. Again, there will probably be hostiles that you have to fight. Let's activate the gate. Warp drive active. And the last type of cosmic signature that it will talk to you about are LADAR sites. Uh, these are gas mining sites. In known space, gas mining is only useful for producing boosters. Basically, uh, a capsuleer's performance enhancing drugs. In wormhole space, gas mining is useful for getting the materials you need to make what are called Tech 3 strategic cruisers very advanced and very expensive types of ships. All right, so you find a LADAR site, you can do gas mining. Uh, gas clouds that are harvestable are only found in LADAR sites. So we're done here, let's click the station and let's dock up. Warp drive active. I'm going to close the scanner window. Docking permission requested. Docking request accepted. Right click Olari Lacentin and start conversation and complete mission. All right, the next thing you want to do is request mission and this involves getting started on actual scanning work. Again, we do need Astrometrics 1 trained up and for me that's going to take another 16 minutes 30 seconds, so I am going to cut out the waiting time from the video. All right, I've skipped ahead to the part of the video where Astrometrics Level 1 has finished training. I also decided to put in Astrometrics Level 2, so that's in progress right now. Uh, I already accepted the mission from Olari Lacentin. Uh, what I also did was that I dragged the core probe launcher onto my ship and loaded it up with core scanner, score, core scanner probes. All right, so there's my launcher with the scanner probes. Uh, basically dra drag on the launcher, drag on the probes. All right, I'm gonna close the fitting window. Uh, the agent gave you a proof of discovery graphometric pass key. You won't be able to complete the mission unless you have this pass key in your cargo hold. So make sure you look for it in your station items hangar and drag it into your ship's cargo hold. All right, so I'm gonna close the conversation with the agent and I am going to undock. All right. Let me set this aside for the moment. And let me right click the station. And again, I'm just gonna orbit right here. Just orbit around the station. And we are going to hit F10 to open the solar system map. And I don't need the cargo hold open right now. Now, we need to put out probes. So first of all, Actually, you know what, let's open up the scanner window. Again, that's the button to the left of your capacitor donut. Again, with the system scanner. And we're going to hit F1 four times. One. Two. Clicking the module also works. Three. And four. Okay. So, that puts out four probes, and what we are going to do... Uh, let's use a nice simple formation. Uh, I'm going to... Tr this sphere represents the scan radius of your probes for their current positions, but you can move the probes around in the solar system. They won't actually move until you tell them to start analyzing, uh, so let's 
tell them what formation they're going to use first of all. You can move a probe by left-clicking and dragging any of the arrowheads. Now there are four probes, so there are four such boxes. One I just moved out here, and the other three are overlapping each other here because I haven't moved them anywhere yet. So I'm then going to drag one off in the other direction, uh, drag one off over this way, and then drag one of them, let's say, up. This will suffice for the moment. We only I only have Astrometrics level 1, so I can only use four probes. I can't launch a fifth, launch a fifth probe because I don't have Astrometrics level 2. All right. So, here are my four probes, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to click the Analyze button. Now, what's going on here is that your probes are trying to find hidden sites, uh, cosmic signatures. If any cosmic anomalies happen to be in range, those will be trivial for it to find. Uh, there are no cosmic anomalies in the volume represented here. But uh, it will also try to look for cosmic signatures. And basically, what the way these probes are trying to find these hidden sites is by a process known as quadrilateration. That is, four different probes are each trying to find their own distance to a particular hidden site. Right. So the way quadrilateration works, and let me turn off three of the probes here. So here's probe number one. I just have that one probe active. If I analyze, if only that one probe is scanning, it's going to try to find any hidden sites that are near it. But each probe can only measure the distance between itself and a hidden site. And you know what? Uh, so this cosmic signature over here, FPA TAC 549, uh, it didn't, the probes didn't find this thing yet. So FPA 549, it only knows its distance from itself to the site. So it can only represent its location with a sphere. FPA 549 must be somewhere on the surface of this red sphere. Okay. Now, if I turn off probe, you know what? Let me. The reason AOT TAC 728 shows up as a green beacon is because I accidentally found it right off the bat when I did the first scan with four probes. Uh, let me ignore this result for the moment. Let's just talk about FPA 549. If I turn on a different probe, say, probe 2, and I do an analysis. Well, with only that one probe scanning, it only knows the distance between itself and the site in question. So, it thinks that the target, FPA 549, is somewhere on this sphere. But, both pieces of data can be combined. If probe 1 thinks that FPA 549 is somewhere on this sphere, and probe 2 thinks FPA 549 is somewhere on this sphere, then the target must necessarily be at a point in space that is on the surface of both spheres. And when two spheres intersect, what you get is a circle. And we will see that in a moment. So with probe 1 and probe 2 scanning at the same time, the result is a circle. Okay. Again, probe 1 thinks the target is somewhere on this sphere, probe 2 thinks the target is somewhere on this sphere. Where the two spheres intersect, you get a circle. Like that. So with two distances, you can narrow it down to a circle. Now, if we throw probe 3 into the mix and start scanning, if probe 3 can see this thing, which I will find out whether or not it can in a moment, no, it cannot. Let me see if probe 4 can see this thing.
All right. So probe four can see the target. And basically, with quadrilateration, uh, probe four thinks the target is on yet a different sphere. So where that third sphere intersects the circle we were talking about a moment ago, you have a pair of dots. So two spheres intersect at a circle, a third sphere and a circle intersect a pair of dots. To finally narrow this down, we need a fourth probe that can see the target. All right. Now, uh, FPA 549 is somewhere off to the side over here. Now, for rearranging your probes, you can move them one at a time by just left-clicking and dragging the arrowheads, or you can shift left-click and drag a single arrowhead to move the whole formation. By the way, you can also left-click and drag a side of the box, and that allows you to move it on a plane. Again, shift left-click and drag on the side of a box lets you move all four probes around on a plane. So I've shifted the, four, whole, the entire formation a bit to the side, and I've let go of the shift key, and I'm now analyzing again. All right, so there's FPA 549. It's a single dot, all right, which means all four probes can see it. Again, if it, were one, if it were a sphere, only one probe can see it. If it's a circle, two probes can see it. If it's a pair of dots, three probes can see it. And if it's a single dot, all four probes can see it. Now, whatever this thing is, uh, I don't have a good signal strength on it. I can't warp to this thing until I get the signal strength up to 100%. So how do I get the signal strength up? Well, I need to reduce the scan radius. So I can do that by shift clicking and dragging a sphere and reducing a scan radius. The lower the scan radius, the higher the signal strength, if the target is still within your smaller scan radius. Shift clicking and dragging a sphere will change the scan radius on all of your probes. And I'm going to let go of the shift key. But now notice how my four probes don't overlap each other quite so well anymore. I can fix that by holding down the Option key on my Macintosh. For Windows users, you hold down the Alt key. So Option or Alt, hold that down. And then you left click and drag an arrow on one of the probes, and you drag it in, and the entire formation will be collapsed or you can expand it, whichever it is that you need to do. And the entire formation will be expanded or collapsed in place. Let go of the Option or Alt key, and there's your collapsed formation. I can Shift, left click and drag to recenter the formation on the signal. Let go. Turn my camera and take a look at it from a 90 degree angle and then shift left click and drag again just to make sure the entire formation is centered on this thing. All right. Once I'm satisfied that all four probes are on the old signal, I can click analyze again. A word of warning. Whenever the signal strength is not 100%, there is some measurement error in the results that the probes give you. Don't trust the results implicitly while it's still red because if you trust it too much and uh, you zoom in way too close, you'll find that the previous result was way off and now you've completely lost the signal and you have to start over again. So this result is now a pair of dots and you'll see two entries on there, FPA 549, both of them. And it's two dots because only three probes can see this thing. So the trick here is to figure out which three probes can see it. Chances are it's probe four that cannot see this signal. So these two dots are pretty close to each other anyway, so it doesn't matter too much. So let me just let shift left click and drag the formation over. Turn my camera. I'm gonna alt click and drag to collapse the formation further. Let go of that. Shift left click and drag the scan radius down. 
let go of that. Okay, I like where the formation is positioned. It looks like it's surrounding it nicely. I'm going to click Analyze again. By the way, another word of warning, your probes do have a limited lifespan. You can see when they expire here in the expires column. I have 55 minutes before these things die. You can preserve your probes by recalling them early. So if you pull them in before they expire and then launch them again, they get a fresh one hour timer. Shepherd your probes carefully and you'll never have to replace them. But with that said, whenever you're doing probe work, it's always a good idea to bring extra probes anyway. Core scanner probes don't take up a lot of space, only 0.1 cubic meters each, so you may as well carry 20 or 30 of them, just to be on the safe side. So, I have just a, signal, a single spot for this result, and it's yellow because the signal streak is up to 54%, so there's going to be less error in the measurements. So I can shift, left click, and drag to move the formation to recenter it. Let me again turn my... Oh, by the way, to center your camera orbit, you can left click any of the probes. And your camera will now orbit that probe. Uh, shift, left click, and drag again. Looks pretty good. Let go. Alt, um, I'm sorry, shift, left click, and drag to reduce the scan radius. Let go of shift. Alt, click, and drag to collapse the formation. Uh, click on a probe name to center on that probe. Z mouse wheel down to zoom in. I like the formation. I'm going to scan again. <clears throat> and I finally have the signal up to 100%. Uh, this is an unstable wormhole. This is not what you are looking for. But it serves as a good demonstration of how to do uh, proper probe scanning. So we, I found an actual honest-to-goodness exploration site of some sort. Uh, don't jump through the wormhole. Chances are it's going to take you outside of high security space. You're looking for some sort of site with the word training in it. And since that's what we're looking for, let's start off let me start off by sweeping the whole solar system again. I'm going to shift, left click and drag to increase my probe radius. Let go. Alt, click and drag to expand my probes out. Let go. Let's zoom out a bit. And shift, left click and drag to increase the scan radius of the probes again. Good. Alt, left click and drag to spread out the probes some more. Very good. And shift, left click and drag to move this closer to the center of the solar system. Let go. And I'm going to analyze. Exploration sites have a tendency to be somewhere within four astronomical units of a celestial object, like a planet or the local star. I'm just doing a wide sweep right now, just to see if I can find anything. But at 30, but at, th at a 32 astronomical unit scan radius, my results are going to be pretty weak. All right, so, oh, by the way, probes can always find anomalies at 100% whenever they're in range. Now, your anomaly, tr your uh, cosmic signature training sites will probably be the easiest sites to find in the whole solar system. So those will probably be the highest signal strengths. And I'm seeing a whole bunch of s red circles here. Let me sh left click the last one, shift left click the first one. Okay. So what does this mess of results mean? These spheres indicate signatures that only this probe, only probe 2 can see. Whereas these circles indicate signatures that can be seen by both it looks like probe 1 and probe 4. Okay. I'm going to concentrate my search on the center of the solar system. So, shift, left, click, and drag. Let me drop this back down to, say, eight astronomical, astronomical units. Let go. Alt, left click, and drag. I'm going to expand the formation until the probes are almost touching each other again. Let go. 
mouse wheel down to zoom in. Right click and drag. Let me see if I can find my probes again. Left click on a probe name to center on the probe. All right, there we go. Zoom out. And a shift, left click and drag to move these over the center of the solar system. Let go. What I'm trying to do is get my probe formation centered over the so center of the solar system. And I'm going to resume my search from there. And scan. And you know what? Let me get rid of this thing. Make this go away. You can read this uh, tutorial window at your leisure. I'm going to get rid of it. All right. So, I have some signals res results here. The first one we need is a gravimetric. Now, when you get a signal strength up to 25%, you start to know a little bit more about the cosmic signature in question. Like, is it a radar? Is it a gravimetric? Is it an unknown? When you get it above 75%, you find out what type of site precisely it is. Uh, like, say, it might be an unknown of an unstable wormhole, or it might be an unknown of some sort of serpentous pirate complex. Or maybe it's a gravimetric of a large kernite and amber deposit. So at 25% you get some information, 75% you get a bit more information. Whoops. Alright, we want to find this gravimetric first, so I'm going... I have a circle result, which means only two probes can see it, and it looks like that it's probes 1 and 4 that can see this thing. Now, I need to decide where to move my formation. First of all, notice that part of the circle goes deeper into the formation. I don't think it's over here on the right-hand side, because if it were, probe 2 and probe 3 would have also seen this thing, and I wouldn't be getting a circle. Because it's a circle, only two probes can see it, so it must be on the part of the circle where only two probes are covering that area. So not only is it somewhere near this circle, it's somewhere near the upper left part of this circle. So I'm going to shift left click and drag and move the center of the formation over that part of the circle. And then I am going to shift left click and drag my scan radius down and then alt click and drag to s collapse the formation in closer. So now my probes are centered on this upper left part of the circle. I'm going to analyze. It helps a great deal if you've got a good head for spatial geometry. Because I say upper left part of the circle, but that's from this point of view. If I turn my camera around, whoop, now it's the upper right part of the circle. Okay, so... Uh, the gravimetric training site... Alright, I zoomed in a bit too much. Now only one probe can see it. Hmm. That's what happens when you try to zoom in a little too quickly. So, let me shift left click and drag, expand the probe radius out a bit more, and just analyze in place. And let me see if I can figure out where this thing went. I also was not paying attention to the scan IDs. While things haven't been found yet, the only way you can identify sites is by their scan ID. So I've got a gravimetric uh, labeled CHN TAC404 and another one labeled RAA TAC059. Either of these gravimetric sites will work. I can select multiples by holding down uh, the control key, or I can select a range if I left click and then shift left click. But there's a couple of gravimetric sites. I'm going to shift left click and drag the formation down. Let go. Uh, I'm going to shift left click and drag the formation over here. And let go. You don't have any depth perception. So you have to look at things from different angles to figure out where they're oriented in space. I'm going to shift left click and drag the scan radius back down again. And analyze. And hope that I can find these things. 
I am quite limited by the fact that I can only use four probes. I suppose I should have gone with a tetrahedron as my formation. All right, here we go. We've got a gravimetric trading site at 100%. Uh, as long as we're scanning, let's find all four of them. Grav, radar, mag, and ladar. Uh, I am going to right-click this grav site and save location. Gravimetric trading site, and click OK. I've also got a radar site at 100, so I'm going to right-click the radar training site, save location. I'll just name it radar training site, and click submit. Now I want to find a mag, a magnetometric, and a lidar. And there are two such things, but only probe 3 can see them, which suggests that they're somewhere off to the left-hand side here. If they were on the right-hand side, more than one probe would see it. So it's got to be somewhere on the outside of the formation. I'm going to left-click and drag the whole formation over to the left, let go, and analyze. Alright, so let's take a look at the LADAR and the magnetometric. Uh, click one, control, left click the other. I'm doing a little better. Now these are circles, which suggests that only two probes can see them. And it looks like it's just probe one and probe three that can see them. That's probe one, that's probe three. So I'm going to shift, left click and drag the formation a bit further over to the left let go, and analyze. Now let me center my view on probe 1. When I do scanning work on my main character, I have astrometrics level 4 already, so I like to use a 7 probe formation. Uh, that gives me more leeway in trying to figure out where something is. All right, uh, the LADAR, XGN TAC 109, if I select both of them, that's a two dot result. So three probes can see this thing, and I'm guessing it's probes one, two, one, two, and four that can see it. Uh, if the result were here, chances are probe three would see it as well. So I think this is the real result, the one that's outside the center of the formation. So I'm getting left click and drag, bring the formation to center on it, let go, turn my view, uh, left click and drag again, there we go. Now it should be centered on there. And I'm going to analyze again. These are training sites, so they should be easy to find, reasonably easy to find. But if you're having trouble, you can try uh, collapsing the formation a little bit and reducing the scan radius. Two dot result again. Oh, gee whiz. All right, you know what? I'm going to hurry up and find this thing. All right, now I've got a one dot result. I'm gonna shift left click and drag the formation to center onto it. Let go, make sure it is centered reasonably well. And just to make sure I have this, I'm gonna alt click and drag, bring the probes in a little bit, let go, shift left click and drag, drop the scan radius. Uh, then make sure everything is recentered again. and analyze.
All right, finally, a LADAR training site and 100%. Right click, save location, and click submit. And finally, I want a magnetometric. I happen to be in luck. Uh, I have a two dot result already on, my, on a magnetometric site. Now again, a two dot result, these are both IGP TAC 792, so the scan IDs are the same. So that means only three probes can see this thing. If it were this result, probe one would have seen it as well, and I wouldn't be getting a two dot result, so it must be the result down here. So I'm going to shift, left click, and drag, center the formation onto it, turn my camera, center my view, shift, left click, and drag, just to make sure it is centered on it, very good, and analyze. Alright, I've got one of each kind. Right click the magnetometric, save location, and click submit. Now these locations, I'll explain what they are. I may have mentioned them briefly, but I'll explain what they are uh, a little bit more. First of all, let me recover my probes because they've been out long enough. They've got only 40 minutes left. Hit F10. We need a grab site. So I saved my results as locations. So if I right click an empty space, I can find personal locations, gravimetric training site, warp to within zero meters. Warp drive <clears throat> this is a training area for capsuleers studying how to scan down gravimetric signatures. Once the area is discovered, capsuleers must recover the proof of discovery document from a storage container in the second room. To access the second room, Pilots must have the proof of discovery gravimetric pass key inside their cargo hold and then activate the key acceleration gate. You did remember your proof of discovery gravimetric pass key, right? Anyway, let's hit Control R to reload the probe launcher. Hopefully, we won't need it again, but let's activate the acceleration gate. Warp drive. Probe scanning takes practice. It'll be very slow for you the first few times. It's going to take a while for you to figure it out. Don't worry about it. It just takes practice. Eventually, you'll be able to find sites pretty quickly. Uh, more advanced scanning techniques use combat probes to find people's ships out in space. And you can scan down somebody's ship and then warp in on them. Uh, if it's out in low or null security, you can then start shooting them, or if you've declared war, if your player corporation has declared war on their player corporation, uh, you can start shooting. Here's the proof of discovery gravimetric. Drag that in. Let's dock up. Now, I want to hurry before these sites expire. These results... Uh, these uh, locations that I found, they don't stick around forever. They eventually expire, and they will eventually be replaced. So exploration sites are never in the same spot for very long. The exploration sites that exist today are going to be different from the, the uh, are going to be different from the exploration sites that exist next week. And the week after that, they're going to be different yet again, and the week after that. So these things are transient. They're not sticking around forever. So once you have all four bookmark, uh, once you have all four locations recorded, uh, let's get through this quickly. So right-click Olari Lacentin, start conversation. We have the proof of discovery gravimetric. Everything screen check marks. Click complete the mission. Request the next mission. She wants a magnetometric site. So accept the mission. Uh, oh, right. You will need a salvager for this. And an analyzer. One or the other, at least. You should have both when you go to a real mag site. Let's go to the fitting window. The agent gave us a civilian salvager and a civilian analyzer. Let's throw those on. Let's close the fitting window. Let's undock. 
Now we did all of our scanning work up front. We have saved locations for the magnetometric, lidar, and radar. We don't have to find them all over again. Provided, of course, that they didn't die in the last three minutes. Right click, magnetometric training site, warp to location zero meters. Alright, it's giving me a pop-up, which is a very good sign. Uh, this is a training area for capsulers studying how to scan down magnetometric signatures. Once the area is discovered, capsulers must progress through the course by recovering a proof of discovery document from one of the containers. Either a civilian salvager or a civilian analyzer will be required to complete the course. You can use a real salvager or a real analyzer. The civilian versions are useful for any missions where the mission does not expect you to have the appropriate skills yet, but if you do have the appropriate skills, you don't have to use the civilian version. So I'm going to left click the archaeology container, I'm going to approach, I'm going to target lock it, ah there it is. Uh, I'm going to wait till I get within five kilometers. Let me move my overview down so it's not overlapping the range here. I gotta get within five kilometers before I can start using the civilian analyzer. If you go to the archaeology container, you need the civilian analyzer. If you go to the salvaging container, you need the civilian salvager. Or the real versions thereof, like an analyzer one or a salvager one. So, I'm, in, I'm within 5,000 meters, I'm going to start trying to open this with Civilian Analyzer. And control spacebar. Let me close this. Alright, it worked. You successfully accessed the training container. Open cargo. Grab the proof of discovery, and let's dock. If there isn't one in the container, another one will be spawned in a few seconds. The tutorial systems might be busy. Uh, there might be uh, four other people trying to get at this container, so don't worry if somebody else grabs it before you do, wait a few seconds, and if the next person grabs it before you do, wait a few more seconds, and if the next person after that grabs it before you do, you can wait a few more seconds, and then when it reappears the th uh, for the third time, you can grab one for yourself, and then you can get out of there, and then the fifth person who is waiting right behind you can wait a few seconds, and the new one will appear. So getting one once you've found the site, getting a proof of discovery will be easy. Right click Alari Lacentin or whoever your exploration agent is, complete the mission. The next one she wants is a radar site. We click accept and we click close. And let me close this. Let me get rid of this tutorial window. Oh, right, code breaker. Almost forgot. Uh, fitting window, we need the civilian code breaker or we're not gonna get anywhere. We'll be staring at the container helplessly without a code breaker. So at least have a civilian code breaker. If you've got the hacking skill and you purchased a code breaker one off the market, a code breaker one will also work. Again, we saved the location. So I can right-click in space, uh, radar training site, warp to within zero meters. I don't have to scan it down all over again because the site still exists. It's not that old. I only found it a few minutes ago. And I can just warp to the location that I saved already without having to scan it all over again. Now that's because I only delayed a few minutes between finding it and warping to it. If I delayed a few days, then when I tried to, if I delayed a few days and then tried to warp to this site, I'm going to wind up in the middle of empty space. There's nothing of interest there. In which case, I'd have to scan down a new one all over again because the one I had recorded had died. Left click the container, approach, lock target. This is a radar site. Remember, you're going to need a civilian code breaker or a real code breaker of some sort. Some code breaker. The salvager and the analyzer will not help you. 
And let me close this agent conversation window. And let me run the civilian code breaker now that I'm within 5,000 meters. And control spacebar. You successfully access the training container radar. Open the cargo, click loot all, left click the station, and dock. Warp drive active. See how quickly you can go through things when you just do all your scanning work up front? If I only scanned for the grav site and then warped to it, pulled in the probes, returned to station, and then washed, rinse, repeat, I'd have to put out my probes four times and do the scanning work four times. I can just do the scanning work once, as long as the probes are already out, find the other kinds of sites that I need. Then, once I've saved all those locations, then I can pull in the probes and go through this bang, 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 bang. No muss, no fuss. Right-click Olari the sentence, start conversation, complete the mission. Uh, you are given astrometric pinpointing as a reward, but I don't think you have the prerequisites for it. You need astrometrics level 4. Astrometric pinpointing is a good skill to have, because if you're going to be doing a lot of scan work, this reduces the scan deviation. You remember that measurement error I was telling you about? Pinpointing will reduce the measurement error. So you're less likely to lose a target because you zoomed in too much. It can still happen, but it's less likely to happen. Let's request the last mission in this chain. Uh, and we need to find the LADAR site. And you need the proof of discovery LADAR pass key. Make sure you drag that up into your cargo hold. Only the gravimetric and the LADAR require these pass keys. Notice you didn't need one for the magnetometric, you didn't need one for the radar. But you do need keys for gravimetric and LADAR. So make sure that you drag it into your cargo hold whenever, uh, when the agent gives it to you. Close, undock. I am now in space. I'm going to right click empty space. And late our training site, personal locations, late our training site, warp to within zero meters. Warp drive active. LADAR training site is no longer here. Wonderful. Sometimes that happens. Right click, personal locations, LADAR training site, remove location. I don't need this anymore. And let me try... a more tetrahedral scanning formation. Since I'm limited to four probes, I should have done that in the first... That was the wrong surface of the box. Here we go. Since I'm limited to four probes, I should have done a tetrahedron in the first place. All right. Center this and analyze. Alright, so what do we have? Just a couple of gravimetrics. That's not what I need. Let's try another planet. <clears throat> I 
I'm gonna close my cargo hold so I can see what I'm doing. Uh, nothing over here. Let me try searching over here then. Did all the other new characters clean out the, um... Let me try centering it on this other planet over here. And you know what? Just to be on the safe side, let me expand this and go out to a 4 astro scan radius. remember FPA 549, that's the wormhole. That's not what I want. As I said before, exploration sites tend to be near planets, generally within four astronomical units, so... That's why I'm focusing my search on the planets this time. It's not always the case, but generally. All right, there's a LADAR training site. Warp to within zero meters. Warp drive active. All right, there's an acceleration gate. Good. So this one hasn't died. I'm gonna activate the gate, Warp drive and we can finally get this done. On my YouTube channel, I have a video about the seven probe formation, which is my favorite scanning formation. Uh, but you do need astrometrics level 4 in order to do that. I will provide a link to a description of that in... I will provide a link to that video in the description of this video. Click loot all. Let's go back to the station. Warp drive active. Uh, once again, uh, for the exploration tutorial chain, the gravimetric and the LADAR need pass keys. So make sure you have those in your cargo hold when you go out on that step of the mission. Recover active probes, control spacebar. I almost forgot to return my probes. Waiting for my probes to come back. All right, the probes are in. Good. Now I can dock. Docking permission requested. Otherwise, Docking I would have left my probes out accepted. and lost them. That would not be good. All right. Right click, start conversation, and we will complete the mission and close this window and that finishes the exploration chain. I'm going to go to my fitting window. I don't need this equipment attached to my ship so I'm going to strip everything off. Uh, you were given an imicus as a reward. Well, the Galente, it'll be an imicus. I believe for the Caldari it'll be a Heron, the Minmatar, a ship called a probe, and for the Amar, I think it's the Magnate. I'm pulling that up from memory. 
So the, the ship that you were just awarded has a bonus to increase the scan strength of probes, which means that your probes will get higher signal strength percentages while being used by an Imicus than while being used by, say, an Atron or some other ship that doesn't have probe bonuses. Probe scanning is very tricky. I'm hoping that this video will uh, get you through it uh, a bit more easily. In the meantime, uh, what we are going to do in the next episode is do the last tutorial chain, the Advanced Military, and in the meantime, thank you for watching.